There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome to another past HSC exam question videos. In this video, we're going to cover this past HSC exam question, which comes from the ethylene and addition polymer chapter. What I'll do in a second, I'll read the actual question. Once I've read the question, you get about five seconds to pause the video. And once you've paused the video, attempt the question. And then when you're ready, press play, and I'll actually cover the, the answer itself. So what I'll do first is I'll read the actual question. It says, you have carried out a first investigation to compare the reactivity of an alkene with its corresponding alkane. A, state the name of the alkane, alkene, sorry, alkene. That's with one mark. B, outline a procedure to compare the reactivity of this alkene with its corresponding alkane. That's with two marks. C, describe the results obtained from the first investigation and include relevant chemical equations. And that's with three marks. Now, when you're ready, press pause, attempt the question, and then, when, then press play when you've done the question. Welcome back. All right, so for the very first one, that's a relatively simple one, because all you have to do is state the name of the alkene. And if you remember, that was the experiment where we had bromine water, and you put an alkene and an alkane into solution. And the reason why we chose cyclohexene for alkene was because the cyclo made it soluble, made it watery, whereas just normal ethylene would not be soluble in water. So we have to have something which we actually can put in water form, and cyclohexene is soluble. So state the name of the alkene, that was cyclohexene. And that gets you one mark, so one out of one so far. For B, outline the procedure to compare the reactivity, so compare the reactivity of this alkene with the corresponding alkane. So that was the experiment, so what you should have done in this one is just a quick summary of you know, the procedure, so that you would have had your cyclo hexane and plus the cyclohexene. That's one part. We have our alkane alkene. We have bromide water. Bromine water. You would drop these cyclohexene and cyclohexane droplets into our bromide water and you would have observed the reaction. And also important is to remember to keep things constant. To mention that we keep volume of both cyclohexene and bromide water, we keep that constant. So there has to be things which are constant to make sure that the actual result is valid. So I'll go through the answer. Add drops, so drops of cyclohexene to bromide water in a test tube. So we add some drops of cyclohexene to bromide water in a test tube. And then we have to repeat that experiment. So repeat the same procedure for cyclohexane. So we do that same thing for both the alkene and the alkane. This gets you a mark, so we have quickly just given an outline. And then if you write, make sure to keep the conditions the same. For example, the amount of cyclohexene and cyclohexane added and the volume of bromine water. This is also important, this is what we keep constant. They wanna make sure you, they know that you can design an experiment and you can recall that we have to keep things constant, otherwise the results are not valid. So this will also get you a mark. And then I just wrote, just to uh, quickly describe the result as well, but we have to do that for the second part, more, more importantly. So I wrote, the color of bromine water fades with cyclohexene is added, but does not fade when cyclohexane is added. That's more important for the second part, part C, but for this, I just wrote that just to, to make sure I have it in there as well. But that was first two points, get you two marks out of two. And then the last one is describe the results obtained from the first investigation include relevant chemical equations. So now we've described the results, which was that fading, and we should include relevant chemical equations. And that's worth three marks. So think about the chemical equations. So what when we have bromide reacting with water, the, the, re, the reaction for that, and then when we have your hydro, hydrogen hydro bromide reacting with your alkene. So that's the other chemical equation that we'll include as well. So we have that, and then say, why did the result happen? So why did the color fade? So why did color fade? We should also include in our answer. 
So I'll go through what I wrote. I wrote, the color of the bromine water fades when, this is just a repetition of the sentence I gave the last one. The color of the bromine water fades when cyclohexene is added, but does not change, but there's no change observed when cyclohexane is added. So bromine water only fades with cyclohexene. That was the first part. That gets your mark. Then here is one of the equations. So this is when bromine reacts with water to form HOBr. So here we have um, bromide molecule plus a water molecule forming HOBr and HBr. So this is what happens when we have bromide and water reacting together. So you can write that as one of your chemical equations. And then you would write what happens next. So the HOBr, which is what happens when water and bromide react together, HOBr adds across the double bond of the cyclohexene due to the higher activity of the double bonds. This is why it happens. And this is the chemical equation for that. So HOBr plus C6H12, which is cyclohexene, those react to form C6H10BROH. Right, so this is our new reaction and a new product. And that's why the color phase, because bromide is out of the, out of the actual solution and on this molecule now. So that's why we see the fading color for cyclohexene. And you still have to write why we don't have any fading color for cyclohexane. And I wrote, no change is observed with the cyclohexane, as cyclohexane has a relatively low reactivity compared to cyclohexene. And that means that nothing will go across its double bond because it has no double bond. And then the actual bromide will stay in the solution. It won't be in the actual structure of cyclohexane. So this will get you, you will get one mark for the first statement that you just, the observations you made. You get marks for the extra chemical equations. And you get marks for correctly identifying why exactly it happens. So because you have the higher activity, which makes bromide come across onto the structure of cyclohexene. Now where does this question come from? This comes from your first time investigation. So identify data, plan and perform a first time investigation to compare the reactivities of an appropriate alkenes with the corresponding alkanes in bromine water. So all of these questions came from that single dot point, and the appropriate alkenes were cyclohexene and cyclohexane. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.